Hey guys, uh, so it's me Sam for part number three from day number three of Depression Quest. And uh, I don't know, today's been pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know, it, it's not really bringing down the mood by playing this. It's because I do find this a very interesting game. So uh, at the point that we left off, uh, we decided to go to the party, and uh, Alex ended up leaving immediately. So our choices. Uh, we can just stand in the same spot, not knowing what to do. Uh, put your bag in Alex's room and avoid the crowd in there for a while. Cling to the back wall, see if you're beer, and wait for your girlfriend to return. Or essentially get drunk to avoid our problems. So I'm not going to do that because that's not what I would do. I'd probably do one of these because um, I'm very much one of those kind of introverted people that would just kind of cling to the same person. Um, but I don't think I'd be really comfortable with just like walking straight out so I think I would probably cling to the back wall and sip on my beer even though I hate beer and wait for the girlfriend to return. Okay. As Alex leaves you are not quite sure what to do with yourself. Standing in the middle of the room leaves you feeling kind of exposed and you don't feel ballsy enough to randomly approach any of the groups of people clustered together talking. So accurate. You head to a clear spot on the back wall and lean against it. For some reason, this always feels a lot more secure. You scan the... Uh, that's pretty accurate as well. Um, you scan the party for a familiar face or any sign of your partner and come up with nothing. Not sure what else to do and worrying that you must look creepy just standing there watching everyone, you take out your phone to busy yourself. 20, 70, tedious games of Bejeweled Blitz later, your partner returns. You spend the rest of the night with Alex, occasionally being introduced to people and nodding along with group conversations, even if you don't participate that much. Pretty accurate. At the end of the night, as you're falling asleep with your girlfriend in the crook of your arm, she thanks you again for coming. Half drunk, she confides that she, you thought, she thought you were going to flake out and was pleasantly surprised that you managed to come out. She says it lovingly, but you're not quite sure how you feel about that statement. That's pretty accurate. I, I, I can't help but imagine that if I was in that situation, I'd be pretty beat up by that. Because people tend to say things, and they mean well, but they have hidden meanings behind it, which makes sense. But yeah, some of the time it can kind of suck. It's a little afternoon on a muggy Saturday. Your mother has come over for a surprise visit, claiming loudly that she doesn't see you enough, so she decided to invite herself over. As you converse, she walks around your place and you get the distinct impression that you're being inspected. So what's going on with you lately, she asks abruptly. Taken a, a, somewhat aback by this left fielder, you tell her that you're not sure what she means. She repeats the question, saying you haven't seemed like yourself lately. She gestures to the dirty dishes piling on the sink and notes the fact that you haven't called or visited in a while. Your retentence... I'll have to look that word up. Only seems to spur her on more. She presses you, asking if you're having problems at work or with Alex, and you're beginning to feel increasingly battered by a sudden well-meaning but overwhelming inquisition. I'm not gonna lie, like, I do always feel, I guess, when I am questioned by my parents that it was kind of awkward. Like, I, 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 mean, I know that they totally mean well, and I don't hold it against them. It's just some of the time it's very hard to talk to them about stuff. I mean, it's hard for me to talk to anybody about this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think especially with my parents. Uh, under her questions you become increasingly uncomfortable. You want to be able to explain to her how you've been feeling, but the truth is you're not really sure yourself. Nothing horrific has happened at work or with your significant other or friends or anything like that, but all the same you can't deny that lately you've just felt drained and as though you're not really here. You wish you could tell your mother these things, 
but she hasn't been approachable about negative emotions in the past. She is the kind of person who holds the opinion that the solution to any problem is to simply try harder and maintain a positive attitude, a stance that has reared its head in past conversations when you've begun to explore the subject with her. You know that she is unlikely to be understanding and you feel the energy drain out of you when you imagine what would happen if you managed to blurt out everything you are feeling. That's pretty accurate, I think. Like, I think it's especially hard for me because I always find it awkward talking to people about this kind of stuff because I am always concerned as to what their reaction is going to be and what if, like, something in the relationship is going to change and stuff. And it's really weird for that reason. So what do we do? Try and be honest. Tell her that everything is fine. Uh, thank her for asking. Or change the subject. Okay, so... I think I probably should just go with what is pretty accurate for my life, which is just say everything's fine. And I mean, I guess that's kind of the way that most people kind of outwardly, kind of socially do depression, is just kind of push it aside. So, yeah, let's go for it. I'm okay, Mum. Really, thanks for worrying about me. Your mother looks at you from across the room with furrowed brows, and you wonder if the tone in your voice was the least bit convincing. She slightly opens her mouth as if she was about to say something more, but instead she digs through her purse for her cell phone, having apparently decided against it. Well, as long as you're okay, honey, her vo voice trails. As your mother returns to what amounts to more or, or less small talk, you realize that this part of the conversation has happened a lot recently. Someone will express concern for you, or ask if you're okay out of seemingly nowhere. You tend to find that it's simpler just to declare that you're okay, than find the right words for complicated and murky feelings. Besides, since none of them are in reaction to a specific event, maybe you really are okay and just complaining about nothing anyway. Sometimes when you insist that you're okay to those who asked, you have to wonder if you're trying to convince them or yourself. That's kind of deep, I mean... I, I guess I haven't really had that many issues where I've been questioning if I am okay. But then again, I guess I... Like, the, the depression I think I've had hasn't really been as kind of clinical, I guess. I, it's just kind of almost been a reaction to all anxiety and frustration that I have in my life and my lack of direction, so I don't know, maybe this is the wrong game for me to be playing It is a lazy Sunday morning You are idly clicking around online as your phone rings Sam, oh that's me, that's me Uh, Sam Well, it's not me, because I'm the unnamed protagonist uh, A co-worker of yours that you, you're friendly with Ask how you are and makes hurried small talk with you. You typically only ever talk to him on the phone when one of you needs a shift covered, so it's slightly awkward. You're waiting in anticipation for him to ask you to come in on short notice when he veers the conversation in a completely different direction. How do you feel about cats? Mine had kittens a few weeks ago and I'm having an awfully hard time finding a home for the last one of the litter. You don't have any pets, right? It takes you a moment to process this new information and you're caught off guard as he begins to earnestly try to sell you on the idea of taking the last kitten off his hands. It's not something that you had specifically considered before and he seems fairly insistent. She's a real sweetheart, really loves people. She's got all her shots already taken care of and the vet said she's healthy, healthy as a horse. I can bring her over by your place tonight if you're interested. You look around your apartment and try and picture a cat in it as he continues to tell you about how cute she is. You tell him that this is all kind of sudden and that you don't have anything for the kitten set up here. Oh, don't worry about that. I can bring over a little box and food and all that since you'd really be helping me out of a fix. It's the least I could do. I just don't want to have to put her in a shelter. You can't help but feel like you're being guilt tripped, but you decide to give it some ser serious consideration. 
It does get awfully lonely around your apartment, and it might feel less empty with a cat around. However, since you've been feeling down, it might not be a good idea to take on the responsibility of a cat, even if they're fit, even if they are very low maintenance. What do you do? Um. Okay. So we can become a cat owner. We can decline because we don't think we can take on the responsibility, or we can decline because we don't like cats. Um. First off, I'm probably going to decline because I'm not really a cat person. And honestly, I'm not really a pet person. Like, I've got um, a few dogs. But, I don't know, like, I'm... I think I'm a bit more... I think I'm a bit better off being alone when it comes to... Because I, I, I think when I'm home, I like to be a bit more introverted. And I'll go, like, online and stuff. Um, so I will decline. I think... Firstly, it's a responsibility, but I think it's also... I don't like cats, but at the same time, I think the main issue that I'd have is the concept of having to be responsible for something, because I really suck at responsibility. I'm sorry, I just can't right now. I hope you find a good home for it. You sit through a few more sales pitch statements that border on guilt trips and rebut them with fabricated excuses about your landlord not allowing pets before your co-worker gives up and thanks you anyway. You wish him luck finding a home for her and as you hang up you feel pangs of guilt as you imagine him having to put her in a shelter. Yeah, I imagine there would be a bit of guilt there. You wonder if the chance of a kitten ending up in a shelter was worse than the chance of you being unable to care for an animal and you feel pretty awful about yourself regardless. Yeah, I think you can very quickly get into a cycle of uh, kind of anger and frustration at yourself when it comes to like these self-esteem kind of issues and these self-image issues, I guess. And I am kind of in that place a bit. Uh... Your apartment's emptiness feels a lot more palpable suddenly, and you wonder if you could have pulled it off. You consider getting a pet in the future after more careful con consideration and preparation. Uh, yeah, and, and I think that's one of the other things that I have noticed, is that I am very much not a risk taker, and I think that's a good chunk of the issue that I have in my life, is that I suck at taking risks. Because it could be so much better. Uh, and when I do take risks, it does end up working well. It's just that some of the time it's really hard to want to go outside your comfort zone. Sometimes it's hard to even just go outside. Because uh, there's so much like weighing you down, I guess. The next day at work, you run into your co-worker and breathe a sigh of relief as he informs you that he was able to find a good home for the kitten. She's probably way better off than she would be with me, you think? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's late Friday afternoon and quitting time is just around the corner. A bright, clear day is giving way to a still temperate evening. You hear your co-workers all around you anxiously making plans for their evenings and weekends, but you're really looking forward just to going home and resting after what's turned out to be a very long and taxing work week. Just before the end of your shift, you get a call from Alex. Okay. It seems a group of your mutual friends are heading out to a nearby pub for dinner and drinks to celebrate the end of the week, and they want to know if you'd like to come along. You tentatively tell her that you're emotionally exhausted from the work week and a social outing like that would just take too much out of you today. You encourage her to go and have a good time since you know it's been a while since she's gone out with friends, but the effort feels futile since you know that she isn't going to go without you. A couple of hours later, the two of you find yourself in a familiar position. On the couch, watching comedy shows on Netflix, a box of pizza open on the coffee table in front of you. As you look across the couch at her, you start to feel anxious. Mm. You feel bad about effectively forcing the two of you to stay in tonight again. While you are always appreciative of your partner's efforts to take your feelings into account and help make sure that you're socially comfortable, you are sincerely worrying that you're holding her back from enjoying a more fulfilling relationship. 
I can't help but feel that in a relationship I'd very much be like that because I don't know, I'm I'm not really in it as, as I said, I'm not really a risk taker, I don't really go out of my way to do stuff. So yeah, I'm kinda curious as to if I'd be in a similar kind of thing. She does seem to enjoy time with you. As the two of you sit in comfortable, almost contented silence watching ultra ultras you've each seen two or three times before. Your ever-increasing fear that your relationship is becoming one-sided. Wait. Your ever-increasing fear that your relationship is becoming one-sided weighs more and more heavily on you. You feel like more than ever, like a burden or a ward to her, and it's virtually impossible for you to see what value you could possibly offer to her in return. Worst of all, this nagging fear has made you feel more self-conscious than ever withdrawing ever inwards and you're starting to pull away even from Alex herself. What do you do? Wow. That that is really deep because I, I think that's that's one of the worst things about feeling really self conscious and self loathing is that it is very much a cycle. Like a really simple example is I'm trying to like lose weight and stuff. But the very big issue with that is that when I get stressed, I like eat and drink stuff, and potentially some of that could come from me feeling fat. So it's kind of like I feel fat, I eat, therefore I become fat. So yeah. So what options do we have? You know, despite the bad times, your girlfriend sincerely loves you. Relationships are a two-way street, and you resolve to always be there for her, like she has been for you. Not an option. Tell Alex how important she is to you and how you and enjoy your evening. And the two options we have is ask Alex if she's happy with your relationship or don't say anything. You're already worried about her being upset with you. And that is a decision that we are going to have to come to in the next episode, which will be posted later today. Uh, but please, I hope you guys will subscribe. And you guys will like, comment, and stuff, and check out this game. There's a link to the game in the description. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. See you soon.